Hey guys, Chris from Adaptivation here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 5 from the May 2016 POA Paper 2. If you want to see the solutions to the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and the link in the description below. So be sure to check that out. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so they want us to prepare the club's statement of affairs as at 1st July 2014. So a statement of affairs is basically a capital calculation, assets minus liabilities. But because it's a non-profit organization, they don't call it capital. They call it accumulated fund. So let me scroll up so we can see the question. Right, so it says St. James Sports and Cultural Club presented the following balances at 1st July 2014. Right, so we have owing for bar supplies, that's a liability, subs and arrears. So again, the majority of non-profit organizations was taken off the CSEC syllabus, but I'm doing this question for anybody else who is not doing CSEC or if CSEC puts it back on the syllabus. So subscriptions is revenue for non-profit organizations. If it's an arrears, that's a receivable, that's an asset. Right, premises, as we know, is an asset, as is equipment, as are bar inventories. Oh, subscriptions in advance, that's right. So subscriptions, again, is a revenue. If they prepay it, hence in advance, that's a liability. Loans to members, so if you lend somebody money, they owe it to you, that's gonna be an asset. We have provision for depreciation on premises and equipment. Fees owing to bank, well, if you're owing it to bank, that's a liability, right? We have bank, cash, both assets, periodicals and magazines, so that's probably an asset, yeah. <laughs> okay, so with the statement of affairs, there's no one right way to do it, no correct order per se, but I like to do assets minus liabilities, and I like to use order of permanence for my assets. So we're gonna start by heading up assets. Now don't forget, please head up your statements, you get marks for that, right? So assets, uh, so I'm gonna start off with the premises net, at net book value, right? So the premises, where was it, it was here. Right, 150, and we had to minus the depreciation of 30 on that as well. Next, I'm gonna put the equipment, net book value of 48. How did we get that? Well, you see in the calculation bracket, but I have equipment of 70,000 minus the depreciation of 22. Okay, moving on from there now, I have bar inventories, periodicals and magazines, loans to members, subs and arrears, cash at bank and cash in hand, and we have a subtotal for total assets, all right? Now, I know some people, and, and what I've been doing as well is giving like a single column approach. I just didn't take that here, but you can use a single column approach if you prefer. Now, for the liabilities, we have a few of them as well. So the owing for bar supplies, the first item across there, all right? Then we had subs in advance, again, so that's prepaid revenue. And fees owing to the bank for a subtotal of 5,600. Therefore, our total for accumulated fund, which is the capital for nonprofits, is $185,100. Okay, so let me just rearrange and let's take a look at the next part of the question. Okay, so the next part of the question tells us the club had 320 members who pay 100 each as an annual subscription. So 30, 320 members and they each pay 100, so 320 by 100 is 32,000. So that's the subscription you're supposed to receive every year. Uh, the following information was extracted from the records for the year ended 30th through 2015. So we have subscriptions in arrears. We have an opening balance and a closing balance. So some people owe us their subscriptions both at the start and at the end of the year. And some people have prepaid at start and at end. So again, subs and arrears, that's like debt as a receivable. So that's gonna be brought down on the debit side. And subs and advance, that's a liability, it's prepaid revenue. So what they want us to do is prepare the subscription account for the year ended 30th, June 2015, showing the amounts transferred to the income and expenditure account. So again, because the majority of this topic was taken off of the CSEC syllabus, effective 2019 come forward, um, we don't teach what an income and expenditure account is. It is basically their version of an income statement with a slightly different format, right? And then payments received during the year, okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with the opening balances, right? So again, the subs and arrears is gonna go on the debit side, subs and advance on the credit side. So let's put those two things together, right? Subs and arrears on the debit side, subs prepaid on the credit side. Okay, next. So remember we were talking about that the club has 320 members who each pay $100, right? So 320 by 100 is 32,000. That's the amount that the club would have earned or was supposed to have received. So that's it, that's your income and expenditure figure, right? So normally we call it the income statement figure, that's the income and expenditure figure, right? So that's 32,000, it's on the debit side here because it is revenue and when you transfer it to the, um, <coughs> sorry, the other side of it is the credit to the income and expenditure account. And credits to that, like credits to the income statement would increase profit, right? Um, now we also have to put in the closing balances. So 
Again, subs and arrears will be brought down on the debit side, subs and advance brought down on the credit side. So we're going to put those there, but of course, before you can be brought down, you'll have to be carried down. So the subs and arrears brought down on the debit side will initially be carried down from the credit side. And similarly, oh, I have CB, <laughs> CD, right. And similarly, the subs prepaid brought, well, that should be brought down, by the way, all right, brought down on the credit side would initially be carried down from the debit side. All right, and we'd have totals here. And of course, the balancing figure would be the subscriptions actually received during the course of the year, which of course would say receipts and payments. Now you could say subs received if you want, doesn't make a difference to me, but really and truly the other account affected by this is the receipts and payments account because that's where all of the money coming in and money going out passes through. Okay, all right, so we have one more part of this question. Let's take a look at it. Okay, so for the last part of this question, it says the following information was extracted from the books of St. Andrew's Archery Club. So receipts and payments account, Bar takings, bar expenses. Okay, so again, because the majority of this topic was removed from the C6 syllabus, you guys probably would not recognize what these things are, right? So bar takings. So the clubs do not buy and sell goods as their major form of revenue. Hence, in their income and expenditure account, you will not see sales minus cost of goods sold like in a regular for-profit income statement for a trading organization. You would just see income and expenditure, revenue and expenditure, but they call it income. Now, the thing is, most times at clubs, there's a cafeteria, a concession stand, a canteen, whatever you want to call it, a parlor, I don't know. And the takings is the sales from that particular part of the establishment, right? So, like if you go to your cafeteria in your school and you buy stuff, that's the takings, that's the cafeteria takings. So, they have bar takings and bar expenses, and we have an inventory account here, opening and closing additional information bar purchases to sell three point times the average inventory for the year hmm so they want the bar trading account right so the bar trading account when i used to teach this topic the, that word bar apparently used to confuse a set of my students they didn't know what's a bar trading account I'm like it's a trading account for the bar <laughs> so don't get confused it's, it's the same format right i'll show you right there are a couple of little slight differences check it out check it out so we're going to start with the bar takings. Then we're going to minus the cost of goods sold. So we're going to need the opening stock, closing stock, and the purchases. Now we're going to have to work for those purchases. So opening stock is there, closing stock is there. Now the purchases, it said bar purchases total 3.5 times the average inventory for the year. That's going to give us 54.25. So as you can see, 3.5 multiplied by 1300 plus 1800 divided by 2. Right, so 1300 plus 1800 divided by 2 is average stock, and then multiply by 3.5 times to give us the purchases. Right, that's going to give us the cost of goods available 67.25. When you subtract your closing stock, you get the cost of goods sold, and we're going to get the gross bar profit of 75.25. Now, <clears throat> we have, of course, the bar expenses, which they talked about up here. Right, so it's so we're going to get a net bar income of a net bar profit of 56.25. So although they ask for a bar trading account, we have to do it like it's a bar income statement. So it's all of the information for the bar in that one place. All right. So again, the majority of this topic was taken off the CSEC syllabus. So this probably will not look familiar to any CSEC student in 2021. I do not know if they will ever bring it back on the syllabus, but for other students who may be doing syllabuses other than CSEC, this I'm hoping will be helpful. Okay guys, so that's it for this question. If you want to check out some more videos, please feel free to click on these cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell. Check out my website for free pre handouts. And as per usual, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.